The study of mandibular movements enables us to plan arrangement of teeth and selection of articulators so that artificial prosthesis is in harmony with stomatognathic system. We have already discussed the movement of mandible in uh, the three planes, the horizontal, sagittal and coronal plane in the previous presentation. So moving forward now, prior to that, let's just take a look at different types of mandibular movements. This uh, following classification was proposed by Shari. According to direction, the mandibular movements can be opening and closing movement, protrusion and retraction, lateral gliding movements. According to tooth contact, mandibular movements could be movements with tooth contact or without tooth contact. The limitation of the TMJ structure, so that can lead to border movements and intra-border movements. We talked about border movements in previous presentation. Functions of masticatory system, based on that the mandibular movements can be the ones made during mastication, during deglutition, during speech and during respiration. The involvement of CNS, that are the innate movements, are breathing and swallowing and the learned movements which are acquired through life. The type of movements occurring in TMJ are rotational and translation. In the previous presentation, we have talked about border movements. Today, we shall talk about the intra-border movements and uh, the movement of the TMJ that is rotational and translational movement. So the type of movement occurring in TMJ is rotational and then translational. So the transverse axis runs horizontally from right side of the mandible to the left. Rotation around this axis is seen during protrusive movement. Mandibular movement around the horizontal axis is an opening and closing motion and it is referred to as hinge movement and horizontal axis around, around which it occurs is therefore termed as hinge axis. The hinge movement is the only example of mandibular activity in which a pure rotational movement occurs. Now this type of movement occurs in the TMJ in two stages, rotational and translational. Rotation movement is the movement of a body about its axis. In masticatory system, rotation occurs when the mouth opens and closes around a fixed point or axis within the condyles. In the first stage, the condyles are stabilized in their most superior positions in the articular fossae, that is the terminal hinge position. Terminal hinge axis is when the condyles are in their most superior position in the articular fossae and the mouth is purely rotated open. The mandible can be lowered that is mouth opening in a pure rotational movement without translation of condyles. It was proposed by McCollum that the presence of a hinge axis is based on the fact that the hinge movement occurs when there is a 10 to 13 degree rotation of the condyle in the temporomandibular joint. At this point of opening, the temporomandibular ligaments tighten after which continued opening results in an anterior and inferior translation of condyles. In centric relation, the mandible can be rotated around the horizontal axis to a distance of 20 to 25 millimeters as measured between the incisal edges of maxillary and mandibular incisors. In the second stage, that is the translational stage, the condyles translate through the axis of rotation of the mandible. During this stage, the condyles move anteriorly and inferiorly and the mandible moves posteriorly and inferiorly. The axis of rotation shifts to the bodies of rami, which are likely to be the area of attachment of sphenomandibular ligament. Maximum opening is reached when capsular ligaments prevent further movement of the condyles. The maximum opening range may vary between 40 to 60 millimeters. This is then followed by the anterior opening border movements. If the condyle was stabilized in this anterior position, a hinge movement can occur when mandible is closing from maximally open to maximum protruded position. This type of protrusive movement occurs while incising and grasping food. This movement occurs after the condyles rotate for more than 13 degrees in the temporomandibular joint. The other part to this body movement is superior contact body movements of the occluding surfaces of teeth. Its precise delineation depends on five factors. Amount of variation between centric relation and maximum intercuspation the steepness of the cuspal inclines of the posterior teeth, amount of vertical and horizontal overlap of anterior teeth, lingual morphology of maxillary anterior teeth, and the general inter-arch relationships of the teeth. Throughout this entire body movement, tooth contact is present. 
The initial tooth contact in terminal hinge axis or centric relation occurs between the mesial inclines of maxillary tooth and distal inclines of mandibular tooth. When muscular force is applied to the mandible, a superior anterior movement or shift will occur until the intercuspal position is reached. The slide from central relation to maximum intercuspation may have a lateral component. Average distance is 1.25 plus minus 1 millimeters. In the intercuspal position, the opposing anterior teeth usually contact. When the mandible is protruded from maximum intercuspation contact between the incisal edges of the mandibular anterior teeth, when the mandible slides forwards and the mandibular and maxillary anterior teeth are in an edge to edge relation, the protrusive movement is said to be complete. Usually, the mandible is guided by the anterior teeth during protrusive movement, which is followed by complete disocclusion or separation of the posterior teeth. And this characteristic posterior separation seen during anterior protrusion is called Christensen's phenomenon. Lingual inclines of maxillary anterior teeth result in an anterior inferior movement of the mandible. This continues until the maxillary and mandibular anterior teeth are in edge to edge relationship at which a horizontal movement continues until incisal edges of the mandibular teeth pass beyond the edges of maxillary teeth. At this point, mandible moves in a superior direction until the posterior teeth contact. The occlusal surfaces of posterior teeth then dictate the remaining pathway to the maximum protrusive movement which joins with the most superior portion of the anterior opening border movement. Because the maximum protrusive position is determined in part by stylomandibular ligaments, when closure occurs, tightening of ligaments produces a posterior movement of the condyles. Retrusive movement this occurs when the mandible is forcefully moved behind its centric relation. It is achieved by the fibers of temporalis digastric and the deeper fibers of the masseter. The magnitude of this movement is very meager, only about 0.5 millimeters, and the resultant position obtained by the mandible is a strained position. The fibers of the bilamina and the temporomandibular ligament and the contour of the posterior slope of the glenoid fossa determine this movement. It is usually not a common movement and the patient cannot voluntarily reproduce it. And lastly, the intraborder movements. Intraborder movements occur within the envelope of motion. They are all possible movements of the mandible that occur within the border envelope. They are of two types, namely functional and parafunctional movements. Functional movements include chewing, speech, swallowing and yawning. Now, in our previous presentation on border movements, we discussed about the movement of the mandible in the horizontal coronal and sagittal plane. So there you can see that the dotted oval structures which are seen in relation to the centric relation, that is the functional movements. Functional movements are also termed as free movements. Functional movements are not considered border movements because they are not determined by an outer range of motion. They are just determined by conditional responses of the neuromuscular system. But to measure functional movements, we need to assess the clinical rest position or the postural position. Now, since clinical rest position is not a true resting position, so the position when the mandible is at rest, which is found to be located approximately 2 to 4 millimeters below the intercuspal position, that is taken as the postural position or the clinical rest position. So talking about the chewing cycle, when the chewing cycle is recorded in the sagittal plane using a pantograph, a characteristic teardrop tracing is obtained. When the mandible moves along the posterior incline of the teardrop, food is sliced by the cuspal inclines. The apex of the tracing is formed when the opposing teeth are in cusp to fossa relationship that is in centric occlusion and trituration of food occurs. Finally, as the mandible moves to make the anterior incline of the teardrop, dispersion of churn food along the slice ways occurs. During the chewing cycle, mandible drops directly inferior until desired opening is achieved. Then it shifts to the side of the bolus and rises up. In maximum intercuspation or centric occlusion, the bolus is broken down between opposing teeth. If the final millimeter of closure, the mandible shifts back to the intercuspal position. Postural effects on functional movements. So the first diagram is when the head is positioned erect and the postural position of the mandible is 2 to 4 millimeters. 
The second diagram is if the face is directed 45 degrees upward as during drinking water. And the third one is if the face is directed 30 degrees downward as during eating. In all these cases, alert feeding position is of significance which is considered while considering the functional relationships of teeth. The mandibular movement during swallowing. The mandible always returns to the centric relation position during swallowing and immediately after swallowing there is a pause in movement followed by movement to the resting position. The movement of the tongue helps to move the mandible posteriorly and superiorly. Mandible movement while yawning. While, the, while yawning, the mandible may move forward and downward up to the maximum mouth opening position. The condition of the elastic fibers of the temporomandibular ligaments determine the movement of the condyle during yawning. So this was about the rotational and translational movement of the mandible and the functional movements of the mandible that are the intra-body movements of the mandible and movement of the mandible with tooth contacts. I hope you have liked this presentation. Please do like, share, comment and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.